Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of a whole bunch of books on car modification, including electronic car modification. What I want to talk about in today's video is using EGR, exhaust gas recirculation, to improve fuel economy. So today I'm not talking about performance, though it does have some part throttle performance benefits. I'm talking about improving fuel consumption. So this is for the hypermilers out there. Before I talk about why it works, what actually is exhaust gas recirculation? Well, here on the whiteboard, I've drawn a simplified version of the intake system of the car. So we have the intake up here coming from the air filter. It passes through the throttle body. It then passes into the engine. So this rectangle here is, is, is indicating the engine. And then it goes out through the exhaust. What exhaust gas recirculation does is it takes some exhaust gas from here passes through an EGR valve, exhaust gas recirculation valve, and then it feeds it in after the throttle. Now, where it picks it up and where it feeds it in is really, really important. Notice it picks it up uh, from the exhaust, but it feeds it in after the throttle and not before. Now, I'll come back to the significance of that in just a moment, but let's have a look, for, uh, before we get to that, let's have a look at how the engine has to struggle when it's at less than full throttle. Now, if you're driving down the road, you might only be on 5% throttle opening, 10% throttle opening, quite a small throttle opening. So the engine is trying to drag air past the throttle, which is nearly closed. And that's why if we put a, a vacuum gauge here, we can see a big vacuum is being created. The engine is fighting as a pump to draw air through a restriction, and that's using up energy energy that we're not getting to the wheels and energy that's being taken from the fuel we're feeding the engine. So at part throttle, a petrol engine is very inefficient because it's got huge pumping losses trying to drag the air past that nearly closed throttle. What can you do about it? Well, a few years ago, uh, BMW made a variable intake valve, variable lift intake valve system. So instead of using a throttle, they actually changed the valves on the engine. But you've still got problem of trying to draw air past the restriction. There's really no way around that uh, with, a, with a conventional petrol engine. Okay, so at part throttle, a petrol engine with a throttle is very inefficient. Its, its fuel consumption is high for the amount of power it's generating. How can we get rid of those pumping losses or at least reduce them? Now, if you're thinking, I know, we're going to use exhaust gas recirculation, you're dead right. Now, if we take exhaust gas here and we feed it in here after the throttle, instead of the engine fighting to draw air past the throttle blade, which is nearly closed, instead it's just drawing exhaust gas round and round and round with so much little restriction that the pumping losses are actually reduced. So by using lots of exhaust gas recirculation, when the throttle is nearly closed, we can reduce the pumping losses and so improve part throttle fuel consumption. Wow, you're saying, I never knew that. That sounds like a great idea. Why don't we put heaps and heaps and heaps of exhaust gas into the system so I can just go round and round without having those large pumping losses? Well, the trouble is, the more exhaust gas you add, the more unstable the combustion gets. And so if you add too much exhaust gas, you'll get missing, you'll get jerking from the engine. It won't be running smoothly. But the reason I'm talking about this in terms of fuel consumption is on some cars, especially those that run an electronically controlled exhaust gas recirculation valve, EGR valve, you can increase it by just a small amount. Increase exhaust gas recirculation over that which the factory provided, over that which was standard, and then get better fuel consumption than the car was achieving before. It's a case of tuning it on each individual car. Of course, the manufacturer has to produce an EGR quantity, which works across a whole range of cars. They're not all going to be built exactly the same. Whereas if you can tune the action of the EGR valve, a bit like tuning fuel or ignition on a programmable engine management car, you can typically get better results. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there might be some results in power. If you've got a small engine car where it hasn't got a lot of torque, you will find that if you run more EGR, you'll probably be able to feel better part throttle torque because the engine will actually have more power available uh, for the wheels because it's not using that power to overcome the pumping losses of dragging so much air past the nearly closed throttle. So in a small engine car, you can actually feel some drivability gains as well as fuel consumption gains. 
Those people who say, oh, you just block off the EGR valve, it's just hopeless, it just wrecks everything. Uh, certainly, in some cars, that is absolutely not the case. Uh, by increasing EGR, but only at part throttle, you'll actually be able to improve fuel consumption and make a little bit of difference to part throttle power. EGR can be very, very important in improving outcomes, especially if you can tune the action of an electronically controlled EGR valve. That's something I cover in one of my books, the book that's showing on the screen right now. So if you want to see exactly how I went about doing that, cost almost nothing, just a couple of small components to make that change. Very effective on the road. My name's Julian Edgar. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.